The United Kingdom predicted that it would have to stop relying on imported gas to sustain its energy needs as far back as the late 1990s. This fact gave birth to the currently under construction Hinkley Point C nuclear power station in Somerset, England. However, this truly colossal third generation nuclear power plant, which has been under construction since 2008, is also nothing but a 41 billion pounds controversy that even the best British academics and experts hate. Some even went as far as calling it the most expensive project in history to generate new British nuclear scientists and engineers capable of developing next generation nuclear powered submarines for the UK Army. The most recent budget figure is triple the original budget and delays are the hallmark of the project that may or may not become operational in 2028. The project is also rather experimental and may or may not actually produce the desired results. If this is not enough, the French and Chinese builders are also exempted from any fallouts if everything goes wrong and the reactor does not deliver or catastrophe ensues. So without further ado, let's take a close look at this supposedly one-of-a-kind modern nuclear power station that once completed will be the biggest of its kind in the whole of Europe and of course, we will take a look at the controversies surrounding it. Let's start with the controversies before we dig into the engineering and technological issues plaguing this nuclear giga project. First of all, the UK government is not the financier of the Hinkley Point C nuclear power station. It is a private project and about 70% financed by the French state-owned company EDF and 30% by Chinese state-owned company CGN. This fact sort of put these two giants in a very strong position. In fact, their position is so strong that we cannot even guess or figure out what would happen if this project does not deliver as promised or if it just falls apart. As far as we can tell, the UK government is responsible and will be responsible for all and any issues and problems, including ultra high prices per megawatt for at least three and a half decades. In the end, it is all about money. The bottom line is that the people will pay the price on their power bills because no matter how much the project costs and the budget balloons, the owners of the power project will be able to impose something called a strike price. Meaning that even if the cost of one megawatt in a wholesale deal is 20 pounds from other power sources in the UK, the government has to cough up 106 pounds or more per megawatt for the duration of 35 years after the plant commences operations. We thought the strike price was 92 and a half pounds, but in 2021 it was raised to 106 pounds. And it seems the builders can write whatever they want on the building cost sheet and play the inflation card as they please, and the UK government will have no choice but to play along and accept a higher strike price in the future. The whole strike price fiasco was and is such a crime, even the European Commission was pissed off and literally and indirectly called it a scam that gave builder EDF the ability to manipulate energy prices, not just in the UK, but the whole of the EU. Well, at least before Brexit. The other major issue this power plant and related messy finance and deals created is the negative effect on green renewable energy projects such as wind, tidal and wave energies projects in the UK which have become cheaper and cheaper to construct and produce energy that can be sold for half the strike price imposed by EDF and CGN. Just to put things in perspective for you, in 2016, two EDF directors opposed to the construction of Hinkley resigned in protest before a crucial board vote that year. That's how really messed up this project is. This pretty much sums up the fiasco in simple words. We can finally cap it with the fact that the project budget is expected to hit as much as 50 billion pounds and the strike price to reach as much as 150 pounds per one megawatt by 2035. And there is nothing the UK government, with all its glory, can do about it, except issuing some quite wordy, rosy reports 
with all sorts of nonsense that requires a top-notch analyst to decipher. As for the UK government's reasoning behind this mess, it simply believes that it is the best green option since it is not intermittent like solar, tidal, and wind power, and it will help the UK achieve its zero emissions goals by 2050 while reducing reliance on imported natural gas. That being said, we and most sane people believe that nothing justifies the associated mess, insane costs, and future monopoly by EDF and CGN on the UK's power prices since 6 million homes and countless large industrial and commercial facilities will have no choice but to receive power from this power plant at a rather crazy price that will set the threshold for the rest of the country. In a nutshell, UK residents can look forward to paying as much as 25% of their monthly income to keep their homes warm during winter. So needless to say, it is a catastrophe in the making and can render the social fabric of the UK unrecognizable as inequality leads society to become similar to what we watch on TV in movies such as Hunger Games. It is now time to take a look at the design and construction details of the Hinkley Point C nuclear power station, which will be the UK's first in more than two and a half decades. Hinkley Point C's main station spans over 430 acres and features two EPR reactors and an electrical output of 3200 megawatt electric. The EPR is a third generation pressurized water reactor design that has been designed and developed mainly by Framatome, which was part of Arriva between 2001 and 2017, and Electricité de France and Siemens in Germany. Third generation EPR designs featured increased safety while providing enhanced economic competitiveness through improvements to previous pressurized water reactor designs scaled up to a net electrical power output of around 1650 megawatt electric per reactor. The reactor can use 5% enriched uranium oxide fuel, reprocessed uranium fuel, or 100% mixed uranium plutonium oxide fuel clad in Arriva's M5 variant of zirconium alloy. Some of the unique features of the design include Four independent emergency cooling systems, each providing the required cooling of the decay heat that continues for one to three years after the reactor's initial shutdown. Leak tight containment around the reactor. An extra container and cooling area if a molten core manages to escape the reactor. Two layer concrete wall with a total thickness of 2.6 meters designed to withstand impact by airplanes and internal overpressure and a low vacuum in the annulus space between the two layers. Preparations of the construction of the project kicked off in 2008 with the construction of a car park for a ground investigation program. In 2012, EDF purchased the site of the Manor of Sydenham near Bridgewater. In 2014, 400 staff undertook initial preparation and construction work. This work included access roads and roundabouts for increased construction traffic, temporary accommodation for a thousand workers, special bus stops and designated routes, and a seawall and a jetty for ships to deliver sand, aggregate, and cement for concrete production. In 2017, the building of the first parts of the plant proper began with a network of tunnels to carry cabling and piping. In December 2018, 2,000 cubic meters of concrete were poured for the first reactor, creating the first part of Unit 1's 4,500-ton base with a platform 3.2 meters thick. In 2019, the final 8,950 cubic meters of concrete marked the completion of the base for the first reactor. Completion of the base for the second reactor was completed in the following year with 8,990 cubic meters of concrete. The builder utilized the world's largest crane, the Sarin's SGC-250 double ring crane, which was responsible for lifting Hinkley Point C's heaviest components, which included more than 600 heavy fabrications and the five major parts of each unit's steel containment liner and dome. In February 2023, the first nuclear reactor pressure vessel was delivered to the site via the Bristol Channel Hinkley Dedicated Wharf at Combwich. The pressure vessel was built in France in 2022 
by Framatome. The reactors are not complete and may not be complete until 2030. Do you think this nuclear power plant was a good idea and great for the economy, or a mere terrible mistake that began and evolved over three decades? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon.